Just before we sit, turn to your neighbor, say hi to them. It's good to say hi to the person next to you. Just before you sit, yes, and I want to give you an assignment. Tell them faith that never gives up. Tell them once again, faith that never gives up. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed, that is a faith that we want, and we're trusting God that he's going to give us faith that never gives up. Let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, and we worship you, God, because you are faithful. We have seen your faithfulness so far, O oh God, and we thank you, God, because of reminding us that you need us to have daring faith such a time as this. And this morning, Lord, as we sit down to hear your word, we pray that, God, you shall speak to us. We thank you, Father, because you are a God who speaks. Speak, Lord. Speak to our times, O oh God, that we are in. Speak to us, Lord, those of us who are giving up, so that, Lord, you shall help us to fix our eyes unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We want to pray that, God, as we walk this journey of faith, we shall not give up. We invite your presence this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we sit down, my name is Harrison Mahinda, and I'm born again this morning, thanking the Lord because of his faithfulness and his grace and mercies. And I am here this morning so that we can share the message that the Lord has given us today. We are walking in a journey of daring faith, as the theme uh, is, uh, is indicated in our banner here. And so far, uh, many speakers have stood here and expounded this theme. And I want to believe we are walking the journey and reading the Bible study materials that were given to us. And I know that God is helping us build our faith every other day. Today, our focus is faith that never gives up. Can we say that again? And our character this week is Isaac in the Bible. We are looking, and a theme is drawn from the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, and we are looking at the hall of faith and the various characters we have in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11 who stood out in their walk of faith. Not just the ones that are mentioned, because the Bible says at the very end of that chapter that if the writer had time, he would have mentioned of many, many others who had faith. And lately, as I've been doing a study of this uh, topic of faith, I have learned that there are very many, many people, and especially also in the New Testament, who had special faith. The likes of the centurion, the likes of Peter, and I'll mention him. These are also people who are mentioned to have shown faith in a great way. And it's my prayer that by the end of this season, as we go on, we too shall stand out in the way that we shall show our faith in God. And the rewards of faith are also evident because when we read the Bible, then we also see what God did to those people who were steadfast in their faith. Now, as we look at this topic on faith that never gives up, it is important for us to acknowledge that it is likely to give up as you wait in faith. It is likely to give up as you wait in faith. In our human nature, we are known to believe things that we can see. So sometimes we want those things that we can see. And therefore we are very uncertain of this which we are told to believe, which we cannot see. But we are reminded of the definition of faith from the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1. That the Bible says that now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That we have that faith of things that we only hope for, but we cannot see. And therefore, for me, faith therefore means taking action. Can we say faith means taking action? So when the Lord is calling us to have faith in him, he is simply telling us, can you take action of that which you believe? And many of us can attest this, that many things that we have done in this life, success has actually found us on the way. Not before we start. Many times success finds us on. You start up something, but along the way you realize, oh my God, I did it. No wonder last year we had a very beautiful song that was trending that I didn't know how I made it this far. Because when we start something, 
with faith and having faith, then by the grace of God, we are able to accomplish. But then it's good to ask ourselves a question. Why do we give up? We're talking about faith that never gives up. That why is it so easy to give up? And I realize that we have a number of reasons why people give up. One of the reasons being, sometimes it gets too hard. Yes, we have faith and we believe, but along the way, it gets too hard. Along the way, things seem like they are taking so long. I have believed, I have prayed, I've had faith that this is going to happen, but I cannot see anything happening. And for this reason, some of us give up. At times, we also give up when we fail too many times. You have tried it before. You try it again. And you fail. And you tend to give up because you have done it over and over again. Someone said, a quote I love so much, that success is failure in progress. Sometimes success comes as part of having failed a number of times. We also fail, or rather we also give up, when we get distracted. One of the uh, enemies of faith, besides fear, is distraction. And we get distractions along the way. We trust, we believe, sometimes we start, but along the way we are distracted. And that in itself makes us fail or give up. Another question, do Christians give up? Do we have biblical accounts of people who gave up? Yes. Even the strongest Christian feels like giving up some time. Even us who are preaching this message to you feel like giving up sometimes. It happens. And I was reminded of Asap in the book of Psalm 73 because he tells us of how God turned him around. And he actually says, surely God is good uh, to Israel and to those who are of a pure heart. But as for me, this is a good confession. He says, as for me, my feet had almost slipped. A believer, a person who has faith in the Lord, but as for him, he got into a situation where he would have almost slipped. And he actually says, I had nearly lost my foothold. He goes on and on and mentions a number of things that would have made him fail. He says a number of, one of the things he said is that he envied the arrogant. He saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are not afflicted. And they are free from common human burdens. And when he looked and compared himself with them, he felt like he is going to give up on faith. He felt like he's going to give up on what he was believing God for. And therefore, it is normal to find ourselves in a situation where we are giving up. And today, unfortunately, we have so many people who have, give up, have given up um, uh, on waiting upon the Lord. We have many people who have given up their faith. We have many people who have even given up worshiping God. Because maybe they waited and the wait took too long. Maybe they believed ne things never happened. Maybe they started something and failed along the way. This morning, as we reflect on our character, Isaac, we have read uh, a text in the book of Genesis. But even before we look at what the Bible says in the book of Genesis, Isaac appears in the hall of faith. And why does he appear in the hall of faith? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, verses 20, which was our leading verse, or our call to worship, that Isaac, through faith, blessed his children on things yet to come. Did you hear that? That Isaac, through faith, blessed his children on things yet to come. Please note, the time that Isaac was blessing his children, he was aged. And in fact, it said his eyes were dimming. And we know for sure that he could not even differentiate between his son Esau and Jacob. You know the story? When he was to bless them and he had to ask for a meal, he would not differentiate because this man was old. This man was dying. This man was aged. But even then, believing in God and the blessing that he had spoken to the family of Abraham, he called on his children to bless them on things yet to come. What a faith. 
that though he's not going to see the future, he believes in a God who is faithful to keep what he, had, he has promised for the future. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, he would not tell of that future. He would not live in that future. But he did not withhold his blessings to the children. The other thing we note, which is now part of what he read in the, in the first reading, is in the book of Genesis, where he persistently dug wells in faith. I love this text. And I want us to reflect on a few things that we can learn from this text we read in Genesis chapter 26. As we see Isaac encountering several situations that required faith. I know some of us have read this text and have looked at it with the perspective of his inability to fight for the wells, and we may actually say he gave up. So when there was strife in one well, he would give up and go to the other. But I want us to look at it as a niche of faith because he had a reason and he had an opportunity to quit one digging up the wells or reopening those wells. And two, he had an opportunity to say, now that they strife in one well, then I'll give up and I'll not look for another well. But for me, we want us to look at the faith in the wells. Can we say faith in the wells? Number one, Isaac demonstrated faith in God in reopening of the wells. And we have noted that when he settled in this place called Gerar, he faced opposition from the Philistines who stopped, you know, stopped up the wells that his father Abraham had dug. Please note that these wells had been dug before. And this time Isaac is coming and reopening, reopening those wells. He did not give up. And he reopened, he demonstrated faith by reopening these wells, acknowledging, of course, the importance of water that he needed for his survival in this desert of Gerar. That is faith. And this morning, beloved in the Lord, God is reminding us to demonstrate faith by doing that which looks impossible. By doing that which looks tiresome or tiring. By doing that which looks difficult to us. That for me was faith. Number two, this man Isaac chose peace over conflict. When he reopened the wells, conflict arose with the huntsmen of Gerar. And these people claimed ownership of the wells. They said, well, these are our wells. And clearly we have learned that these were wells that were dug by his father Abraham. However, Isaac did not resort to violence and aggression. Instead, he chose peace and moved on and went to dig newer wells and other wells. And the wells that he dug, he was actually naming them appropriately. And in every name, he was indicating his faith in God, that God would provide for him even in the midst of challenges. Well, sometimes in this life, we encounter strife. We encounter opposition. Jealousy comes. And some people feel like we do not deserve what is even ours. And for that reason, many of us even give up. This morning, God is telling us, by faith, we shall not give up. And we shall pursue that which is given to us. Well, sometimes there conflict may ensue, but we may not need to fight. We believe in God who says the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. And what is yours, the Lord will make it yours. We'll make sure that it comes to you. For the door that the Lord has opened, no one can close. And that which he has shut, no one can open. Number three, he demonstrated faith in digging new wells. Imagine this. A well is filled with dirt, but then he goes ahead and digs another well. Digs another well. I feel like telling you, can you dig another well? Praise the name of the Lord. Help me to preach to the pastor sitting next to you, tell them, dig, dig another well. You may have lost that opportunity. You may have tried it before. You may have done this, you know, years ago. You may have attempted it. But the Lord is telling us, don't give up. There may have been strife and jealousy, opposition in what you did first. But the Lord is saying this time around of daring faith, dig another well. Praise the name of the Lord. In our second reading, we read about another servant of God, Peter. 
and his, and, and, and his friends' disciples, before they became disciples. And this man had uh, gone fishing for an entire night. And they were a professional fishermen who knew the right hour of fishing. And they went out and tried catching fish for an entire night. And when morning came, and Jesus was preaching next to the lake, they were uh, fishing. These men were somewhere washing their nets. And I'm too sure they were not washing nets as they celebrated. You can imagine a whole night trying to fish. You're not washing nets trying to remove the fish that you caught. You're washing your nets, removing the weeds. You know, because you caught nothing. They had, they had spent an entire night. And morning came. Jesus was preaching next to the lake. And after he was done with his preaching, called on the men and told them, you know what, men? It's time to go deeper. It's time to go deeper into the sea for a catch. And they looked at Jesus and they said, Jesus, we are professional fishermen. We know the time. We know the place. We have done it. We have done this the whole night. They almost told Jesus, we are not in a position to do what you're telling us. But God quickened Peter and he said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved in the Lord, we may have gone situations that are making us feel like we're going to give up. This morning, the Lord is telling us, nevertheless, let us lower down our nets. Hallelujah. You may have done this before. Don't give up. In the season of daring faith, it is your time to let down the nets once more. Jesus knows that this could be your season. This could be our season. And indeed, this is our season because that is why he has given us this word. Isaac demonstrated faith in digging new wells. He may have said, I've given up. He may have said, I'm tired. He may have said, I've tried this before. He may have said, I have prayed over and over again. I have believed God for this situation. I have believed God for my health. I have believed God for my children. And now I have reached a point, I have washed my hands and I am washing my nets. Even if you're washing your nets, this morning the Lord is saying, go deeper. Your catch is coming. And we all say, Nevertheless, Lord, at your word, we shall let down the nets. Amen. This morning, the Lord is telling us, let us lower our nets once again. Let us reopen the wells. Let us go back in faith. Our God is here. <laughs> And I want us to go before the presence of God. And I want us to look back at the wells we dug before and how they are filled up of dirt. The Lord this morning is telling us, go back and reopen those wells. Go back and reopen those wells. The Lord is speaking. What are these things that you feel like? You know, I have given up on this. I have given up on this person. I have given up on this project. I have given up on this case. I have given up on this issue. Ni mambo gani ambayo yamefanya uoshe neti zako? Zingine hata zimefanya tuoshe mikono. Before the presence of God this morning, we want to tell God to give us strength so that we may be empowered to have that faith that it is not too late. It is not too late. It is not too late. It is not over yet. Mighty everlasting Jesus, we want to believe together as a church. We shall not give up our faith in you. We may have waited, Lord. We may have tried and attempted before. But this morning, Lord, through your word, we shall let down the nets once again. We shall let down the nets at your word, Lord. At your word, Lord, we shall let down the nets. This is the faith we have, Lord. Because your word says that this is the confidence that we have in approaching you. 
that whatever we ask that is according to your will, God, you shall always give it to us. Father Lord, we pray because we have faith in you. Come through for us, O Lord. Just as you came through for Isaac, that Lord, he went on and on and on digging new wells until God, in your word, we have seen that he got to his final third wealth, uh, well, the well of Rehoboth. The well that means there is no more strife and we have, new, no, we have more than enough room. Our prayer this morning, Lord, is that God, you shall take us to the point of our third well, the well of room enough, the well of no more strife, the well of no more accusation, the well where there is no more jealousy, the well where you shall reconcile us, God. We thank you, Father, because you went on and even dug the well of Sheba. And in the well of Sheba, God, we saw his accusers coming back to reconcile with him. God, we pray that you shall restore us. Restore our fortunes. Restore our children. Restore, Lord, what we have believed you for. We worship you, Lord, and we thank you. And we pray that Jehovah, King of glory, our faith shall not give up on you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Um.